I don't know. You think maybe this is why the motor might be dusted? Look at this, man. The clamp's not even on here. It's tightened up on nothing. God. Look at that. Tightened up on this and not on the elbow. Ridiculous. Should put the date on that with the sharp. I will. Okay. Half these bolts are stripped out. One was cross threaded, you said, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happens when you know a guy that can do it cheaper? I don't know if you can get a guy to do it cheaper than I did. We're talking cheap. How do you get cheaper than nothing? <laughs> I can't help but wonder if this is just wrong. I can't believe this would be bolted to the side of this sheet metal when there's two corresponding bolts here and here and then another one here which would correspond with that right there. So you'd be pulling on this stiff, nice strong core support instead of a sheet metal box. I, I just, I can't say that's right. So, uh, we're going to change it. So we got this changed over. I got to tell you, I think that, I don't know if it's where it's supposed to be or not, but now that cable is tight and that one's tight. Before, this one was loose and that one was tight. So I don't know if it's meant to go there, but I just can't see how it would be a good idea to have it on this sheet metal. So that's done. Next thing we need to do, I got to change oil on this thing and the filter. So I'm going to hurry up and drain this out. And get it refilled nothing spectacular there and i got to change the fuel filters the fuel filters on these this particular truck for whatever reason it's hard to get primed so i'll show you how i'm going to prime it i absolutely hate getting covered in diesel oil so i take the oil filter and i pop a hole in the bottom of it to try and drain it before i take it off getting covered in oil because that thing will hold probably two quarts anyways sometimes you add a second hole at the top it helps it drain out easier and this oil pan's in bad shape been smashed a couple times I think this truck holds like six gallons or so of oil <clears throat> So, get this going. And this thing's an oily mess. I'll go grab another pan. I'll swap that out real quick when I need to. That drained out real quick. This is the oil filter, and uh, you know, there's so much controversy on whether you fill an oil filter or not. It just gets tiresome listening to it and reading it and seeing it. You know, some manufacturers say not to. Other manufacturers do. Some oil filter manufacturers say right on it to fill or not fill. And then there's the question of whether you should pour it down the center or if you should pour it down the outsides. Some guys say, well, if you pour this in like this, it's not filtered. And the only, way, only I can tell you is, if it's not clean enough coming out of this jug from the factory and has to be filtered before you run it through the engine, I don't want the oil because it ought to be adequately filtered and clean coming out of this container. 
So I always fill mine because that's my preference. The suckers, there's three quarts in there so far. So, I guess three quarts. Yeah, three quarts. Look. So you'd have to fill this three quarts so far, and we're not even full yet, before, you know, the oil would get ran through here. <clears throat> Anyways, I'll fill it up. Once it's full, we'll put it on. So I like to clean up all around the oil fill and the cap itself before I start putting oil in it so there's no crud falling down in there. But I've got uh, three quarters of a gallon, so three quarts in the oil filter. And I think it take like, takes like 6.6, .6, 6 and three quarter gallons, something like that. So we should be able to put six full gallons in the fill here. So I've got a total of five gallons in it so far. We're just slightly under full. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this, let it get up to uh, get some oil pressure, and then shut it off and then we'll start it again and then recheck it, because I'm only like maybe a quarter an inch from full. So six gallons is what it takes, exactly six gallons. And we're full, so let's do the fuel filters next. So I got my fuel filters in a bucket. I go up to the fuel tank. I have an electric fuel pump I drop back down in the tank and I run it off the batteries. I stick my filler tube down inside my filters. And usually I'm doing this with two hands, but I just turn the pump on. I let the pump fill up my filters. And then as they start to get full, I go to the other one. This way I'm catching all the diesel fuel that I'm going to spill because I most certainly am going to spill some. So I just fill these up. Once I got them full, I'll put them on the truck. kind of slow so we don't spill any diesel fuel. It's pretty diesel soap now. Let's see if my mark will write on it. I put the date on it in several places. So if you can't read one, maybe you can read the other. Okay. Now that those are on, now we're going to see if it if it's enough that it'll it'll run or if I have to prime it. Now there'll be enough fuel in the rail for it to start. But the question is will it stay running? You see it stammered just a little bit there. See it's trying to pull that fuel because as lines are empty, sometimes I gotta prime this thing. look for 
leaks as well because anywhere this could suck air it will it'll suck air before it does fuel now we'll just let it run for a few minutes just to make sure that we're uh we don't have any air in it winter time's coming so we're gonna pump some of the fuel off the bottom of the tank because that's where our water will settle we'll pump probably i don't know a gallon or two out just to make sure there's no water in the tanks because it usually will sit right on the bottom and these electric fuel pumps don't really cause a big swirl so you can usually get them down nice and low and get it all out so this air dryer has been on here for about three years now and not only is it time to change the it's way past time to change the cartridge um, but we're having troubles with it spitting and sputtering and sometimes it's not purging right and Rather than mess with it, I just decided we'll just put another one on. Just makes good sense. Because this truck needs to run all winter long. Well, it runs all year, every year. Just runs a really a lot more in the summer months. Summer months, this truck will be on the road 16 hours a day. So I'm taking the air dryer off. And now we may have found why we're having troubles with the air dryer. The air compressor is pushing oil through this line from the compressor into the into the air dryer and it's creating this sludge which is probably what's making our purge valve act up and uh, not work like it should so we found the effects but the cause of this is probably the air compressor the air compressor it's like a small engine it has an oil supply and a return it has a piston it has rings it has valves so if you get wear inside the compressor and the air can get past or the oil can get past the um, the rings and into the combustion chamber it'll push it through here just like it is so I'll have to give him a call and see if he wants to put another air compressor on it or what he wants to do because um, if we don't replace the compressor it's probably going to do it again but we're so deep into this so far beyond where he wanted to go again that uh, I don't know if he's really going to do that that compressor is only three years old. It really shouldn't be having a problem already. So, yeah. we'll see what he wants to do. Uh, I'm betting he's not going to want to replace it. I guess while we're at it, we might as well fix this. It doesn't fit right. It's too tight in here. We need to slice off these corners a little bit more. That's a little better. Fits in there good. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, we'll call that good enough. Okay, gotta adjust the clutch. Time to adjust the clutch. Push your pedal in. I'm almost to the floor. It's almost as far as it'll go. Should be enough to release it. Now we can get downstairs and adjust it. If you get lucky, the guy that put the clutch in last time was smart enough to install it with this down, the adjuster down, because typically an engine, when it shuts off, it's gonna shut off in several of the same positions so if it was shut off and they you know they put it down where it's accessible then the likeness is going to shut off again at the same place you got a pretty good chance this one wasn't um i had to bar it over because it always was at like three o'clock or maybe uh, nine o'clock that's where it kept ending up now it's in the right position you can see between the clutch brake and the throw out bearing right in there we do not have enough clearance so i can get a light in there better Make it easier to see or maybe that so you see the you see the trans brake right there and the uh throw out bearing which obviously needs greased um we got gear oil leaking our motor oil to the back one or the other there's supposed to be a half inch gap between them two and so the way you're going to get that gap the way you want it is by pushing in on this bolt here pushing in and turning clockwise i think it is and uh, then you just take your half inch extension which this is what i do i take a half inch extension and i try and get it between the two once it fits between the two it should be properly adjusted Normally you don't ever have to adjust your linkage, but you see how much the pedal's moving there? That is just the play in the fork right here. 
I'm holding the fork. It's not moving. You can see how worn the pin is. I mean, it's moving the fork a little bit because I'm not holding it, but that is why I'm not getting my full travel out of that arm for my clutch brake. So the only option I have is to adjust this linkage. Oh, you can stop. Adjust this linkage and take that slop out of there. Um, we're not going to take the slop out where the fork touches the throwout bearing, but we're going to take the slop out of this. I mean, that's, that's moving an awful lot. I don't really want to adjust this, but I know he doesn't want to spend the money to fix this. So, that's probably, that's uh, at least three-eighths of an inch it's moving right there, which once you hit a pivot point and you put a long lever on it, that three-eighths of an inch gets multiplied down here and gives us this. Yeah, just up and down. I want to make sure I get all the play out of these pivots. Okay, go all the way up. Yeah, I think I got it. Yeah. Like I said, normally you wouldn't adjust this, but these pivot pins and these forks have so much wear in them that we had to shrink this because what was happening was we lost all our travel. Um, we had to make it to where it's tight and holding the two. Go ahead and push down. Yeah, because you see we're shrinking it. It's not pushing, it's pulling on it. So we shrink it and we had took that slack out then we're able to get all of our all of our travel out of the fork and the the shaft that goes through the the flywheel housing is bell housing whatever is uh uh worn as well so we got we're losing some of our our movement there all right it's not focusing very well but look right now i measured my extension that square part is exactly half inch and it'll go in there nicely so the next thing we want to do is make sure the throw out bearing can come back far enough to contact the clutch brake so I'm going to use a 10 thousandths feeler gauge okay go ahead and push it, push it in and it should hold it okay now let it off really slow yeah that'll work and we still have about a half an inch from the pedal to the pedal stop on the firewall. All right, go ahead and let it up all the way. And now hit it again. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, so really a lot of our problem was here in, in these. Let it up. We still have some play in here I could probably take out. But I got to be careful because some of that, if I take all that out, then I'm going to, it's going to mess with my adjustment to, I think, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and take a little more out. I need to replace, it needs, watch here, it needs the crossover shaft, it needs <clears throat> the arm coming off, it needs these also because these pins are not only loose in this arm, but they're loose in the fork as well. Okay, so we've got all the slack out and we've measured. Go ahead and do it. Okay, let up now. We still have just a little bit of play. Which is okay because we need an eighth of an inch between the two forks that hit the throwout bearing. Between those those two dogs that come up and the actual throwout bearing itself. We want an eighth of an inch in there, which we have. We have our half inch between the throwout bearing and the clutch brake, and then we can put the 10, 10 thousandths feeler gauge in between the, uh, the throwout bearing and the clutch brake, and when we do, we end up with about a half an inch of clearance here. Push that in all the way, because this was going all the way to the floor. 
you're in. Yeah. And, oh, it was hitting back there. Right? Yeah, it's sure. hitting, but now I can get my fingers back, get a finger in there. So that's good. Now let it up. And then our free play, I think we're right around an uh, inch and a half. Go ahead and just take the free play out of it. Okay, go down. Back up. The spring's worn. Just doesn't pull up as well. Go ahead. Back up. Nine. See right at nine. Go ahead. Mm, yeah, inch and a half, inch and three quarters. So we're gonna call that good as long as the cut clutch and gauge is good, which I can't test that right now because I have the brakes cage and I have the suspension all tore apart, and I really don't want this thing flopping up, trying to flop all over the place. So we'll deal with that whenever we're done. Uh, as of right now, we're not putting a compressor on it, so we're coming down to the wire. I need to grease the whole entire truck and put the suspension together. Check the clutch brake. It's running. If the clutch brake is working right, I should be able to push this to the floor, select the gear, put it in, and it shouldn't grind. It's grabbing right there, and we're not bottomed out. I should be able to let that clutch out, go ahead and push it back in and grab another gear. So our clutch brake is engaging properly. There we go. Should go in any gear. Okay. And throttle kill. Make sure that's okay. So I tried to put a grease fitting on this. And, uh, of course, there's nothing there because it's broke off. If you look under here, it's very easy to see. That thing uh, hasn't had grease in forever. So let's get us a grease fitting. And, uh, you know, Boy, it is right on the edge. That hose is supposed to be in farther. It sucks. You know, I know a guy. You can see what I'm saying. I mean, this this is old grease. This hasn't been greased in forever. I mean, look how hard it is around the fitting. I guess I'm beating a dead horse here. Got a grease fitting doing this. It's time to replace it. Because if it lets grease out, it'll let water in, that's for sure. And if it's doing this, you're greasing it, it's just coming right back out. It won't hold it. And then, uh, it's just like one that uh, you can't get grease to go in. Sometimes you got to replace them. Next thing we need to do is grease the kingpins. So in order to grease the kingpins, I want to get a bottle jack under the axle on either side. And as I'm putting grease to the bottom, and then at the top, I'll have my wife run the wheels turn the wheels left and right. That way it works that grease all the way through the kingpin. The rest are okay. <sighs> so aggravating. So aggravating. So I finished greasing it and I put a fourth one in but I only needed two more grease fittings. But he needs to grease this truck far more than he is because there's not a ridiculous amount of grease fittings on this truck. But every fitting that I hit was dry. Um, every U-joint, my Milwaukee has uh, an automatic set for 50 clicks, basically 50 pumps. And uh, I did 100, 100 on, the U, on most of the U-joints. I did 300 clicks on that slip yoke and the other slip yoke. So it's not getting enough grease. He's gonna to have to grease it a lot more than he has been. So I put this headlight bucket in a couple years ago. And uh, this was holding, but now there's nothing holding it together. So I think probably what we need is like a metal ring to go inside here and tie all of this together before this cracks it's gonna crack right in here i'm sure that's next uh, i don't know how much longer he's gonna run this truck or at least this body but 
can't have that flopping around. So I think next I might see what kind of metal I've got. If I can make something that can lay in there and then cut it just drive here, just make like a ring. Something. Something will hold this together. It's bad. Really you need two, one on the inside, one on the outside. Sandwich it together and then rivet it. Better look. I mean, I could put something across here to tie the bottom together. I just don't think it's going to do a whole lot when that's all we got to grab to. I don't know. If I took a piece of something across here like this, that would hold the bottom together. But it would take a lot of holes to do that. We don't have a lot of room. If I put something over here to hold it, it would definitely help. I don't know. But he's had these headlights on this truck now for two years, and he just loves them. He thinks these things are fantastic. So I'm going to start working on this headlight, this mess here. And uh, someone I know had this sign here, so we're going to use it. It's aluminum, and it's thick enough that I think what we can do is make us a template that will go under the headlight bucket here. Uh, between the headlight bucket and the fiberglass. So there's what we're going to start with. Looks like I'm going to use a jigsaw or something to cut this out pretty close. Flap disc it the rest of the way. And then I'll have to cut the center of it out. See how much room we actually have in here. It's not a lot as you can see. There's like hardly any metal here. So all my strength is going to come from here. And I think there'll be enough metal left over. I could probably just go underneath this on both sides and come across and grab this. That's probably the strongest thing I can do. But we need to reinforce this because there's just nothing left here. Right, so this is our first fit. Let's see how it looks. Well, it's not bad. I think uh, it's okay. So now what I got to do is go on the inside and trace this on the back and then cut it so it's just this ring so that ought to be fun well it's not a lot but it gives us something at least to rivet the bucket to um, and it seems to fit pretty well it matches the opening well um, at least that'll give us something to work with on the bucket so i think i'm the next one's going to come across this way, like this. I was going to do two of these, but I don't think there's enough there to really make a huge difference. So we're just going to squeeze the bucket, bucket, hood, and then this on the rear. Squeeze all that together, and hopefully that helps. And now we're going to add something across here to keep this. I can't do this until the bucket's in place because obviously, you know, something's a little goofy there. Okay, so I've got this vice script in, and what I'm going to do is clamp it in good. And everywhere there's an existing hole, I'm going to drill through my ring and then get, get as many as I can in here. And then get the headlight bucket mounted back in place. Then we'll start on this here. i got a couple started. I just want to make sure that this is going to fit right before I drill anymore. I'm going to make my way around both ways. It's working okay. Not ideal, but yeah, it'll do. I'm pretty certain it's better than it was this morning. I got it all riveted in. I used the factory holes. He had added some screws down in here and they weren't holding anything. Um, it had this one, but there's nothing there. I mean, my my plate is there, but the, the uh, whatever you call it, the fiberglass isn't I just move it down a little bit make it easier and it's it's pretty stout but you can see it's gonna move here so with every bump this is what it's gonna continue to do so we really need something across this face to keep it from moving forward like this so ideally it would need to come down here on this plane flatten out and then bend back a little bit the same thing come across here and bend up like this get rid of these screws and then pop rivet this section, get behind this if we can, and pop rivet here and here, here and here, and then have us under a little bit. That'd be ideal, but that's getting pretty elaborate. 
We'll have to see. Let's look at the other side. See how much it moves. It's broke too. <laughs> look, it's it's breaking here. I've said this before. Where do you start? Where do you stop? Um, yeah, we're just going to do something here. I don't think this hood is that much longer for the world. So I've got a piece cut out of that sign and I've got it marked out so I can bend a 90 on it. I just don't know if I can. We only have an inch inside here. I should have made that a little bit longer because now it's really tough for this to hold it. But I'm using the truck frame as my metal brake. We'll see what we can do. It ain't going to be great, but better than what it was. So I made this piece of metal to go across here. But I think if I rivet it to just this, it's just going to fall apart. So I'm going to make a piece to go from here to here. And then we can rivet in here symmetrically. And uh, I can get four over here and four over here. And it should look somewhat decent, I think. Maybe. So I'm just going to take some more of that sign. I'm going to cut it down. I guess that's too small. I'll get one of the other pieces. It would be nice if I could roll that up here and get some in the side that would really kind of help stiffen it up I think I had to bend this up some because of this I don't know if I like that um, I want that 90 here but I think I'm gonna bend that back just the way it was I'm gonna zip tie these over this way out of our way I cut it and put a bend on it here to come up to this and then just trimmed it in here to mimic what's there and then I just rolled this edge in here with a piece of pipe and then flapped this to the bottom. I think it'll be all right. All right, so I got it all done. Got it fit around here and I did the best I could to make this roll up like this and match these bends. You know, it's not great, but from what we started with, I think it'll be all right. I was gonna put a bolt through this side for this part that I put in, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to leave it like it is because it's plenty strong and I don't I don't want to make any new holes in anything because I have a feeling, you know, we're going to have to do more to this this hood. The other side's busted up too. It's just a matter of time, you know. Look at it. It's doing the same same kind of crap here. But uh and it is what it is. These are seized in here, and I couldn't run new bolts in because I couldn't drive that out, so I had to put them in this way and get the exact right length of bolt, or close to it anyways. Um, yeah, that's just what we're going to do. I'm just going to leave it, and uh, I'm all right with it. I think it'll be fine. So I've been using this Milwaukee M18 rivet gun on this project uh, quite a bit, actually, and I'm not done. I have quite a bit more to do, and I'm very happy with the tool. It's a consistent pull every time, so the back of your rivets look the same every time, and the stem breaks at the same point every time. So I don't know if that's uh, contributed to the gun itself or the gun and the stems, but it's by far better. And I also got the mini huck, book, huck gun as well. I have a Peterbilt that um, we're going to have to change them out some, some uh, body panels. And a mi mini huck gun is going to do these kind of rivets that you might see here. See how this is a, a solid center here? It's because you're, you have access to the back of it at some point. So a mini huck or lock nut lock bolt um, it's like a rivet it has a stem but that stem has grooves not threads but grooves and the collar or lock nut that you put on is smooth on the outside and ringed on the inside so the gun literally pulls on the stem while pushing on the nut making that making it overcome the rings that are on it and pulls it tight and then once it can't pull any farther the stem breaks off and that's what we're going to be replacing on another truck so um, that'll be very very helpful because uh, there's a lot of them to do in a body when you're doing body work um, but now that we're all done with this part i have another bracket coming two of them are down here for the center we don't have the middle ones yet um, middle one a uh, center one front one that's what i'm saying we don't have that front one yet so when it comes in um probably in the next video we'll pick up on this we're going to quit here because there's still a lot more to do um 
and some people said about you know lack of maintenance and whatever but you got to realize you know like I, I left a comment and pinned it for guys you know up until a few years ago the, the, he, the biggest truck he ever had was a three-quarter ton so this is kind of still kind of new to him and we're uh, he's making strides man he's making good improvements no longer do does he fight me on every single dollar that we spend he uh, he still doesn't like it but he can appreciate the fact of what it takes to keep these trucks going because this truck has been going for two years now without any major breakdowns and it's been profitable. Yes, it needs a pile of money. We've spent thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars in parts, but it's so much less work than it was previously. He's making strides. So a lot of people, it's easy for him to grade the guy. I look at it differently. Um, it sucks that it gets this far and some things are getting let go, but at the same time, it's here and he's like fix it so in that respect he's made huge huge gains in growth in uh, running the truck and you know as long as he continues to progress like this it's not going to be a problem he'll get better and better and he wants nicer trucks now so that's a big step so we'll pick up on the next one and uh hopefully that'll be the last part of this one so hope you guys enjoyed catch you on the next one